All right, here's our second uh, um, video for um, CIE 101. This is our textbook that we're going to use for the first half of the semester. It's Auto Introduction to AutoCAD 2016 for Civil Engineering Applications. Um, and we'll take this right to our spring break. And after spring break, then we're going to start working with uh, Autodesk Revit program, doing some 3D modeling and some BIM applications, BIM being building information modeling. So to start with, um, you should uh, you can purchase this book at the bookstore. You can get it online. I, I'm going to try to post this information um, early before the semester starts, so some of you may want to get started on this early. Our first week, we're going to start with the first two chapters. Um, and I pulled some of the graphics from the textbook talking about using graphics as a part of the engineering um, solution uh, for separate problems. They also include communication, uh, problem solving principles, analysis, and organization. The graphics not only help us build whatever project we're working in, but they follow the project. So if we have issues later on, now as a person who works in facilities, uh, we're constantly being asked to go back and look at the original plans and specifications uh, to find information about a particular building. Even back in the 40s and 50s, we've scanned those documents and made them searchable. Graphics themselves. Uh, for instance, this is a uh, say a cabinet door or a picture frame has some dimensions on it with um, with some um, uh, plus or minus um, options that are available. Now, if we can hand sketch this with a pencil and paper, we can draw it out with straight edge and rulers to scale, or we can draw it on a computer. Uh, the computer gives us the most accurate ability, and I can just remember when we were uh, first starting out with CAD, um, I was actually trained as a board drafts person uh, with the pencil and the, and the pens and the straight edge and the rulers and the scales, and we drew everything to scale. Um, the difference with computer-aided drafting and design and modeling is that we draw everything to full scale on the computer, and then we export it to scale. Uh, this is just an example of a scale, uh, base 10 scale. This may be one inch in actual dimension. It's shown as a 10. If we look at this object and we want to determine the dimensions from A to B, we can lay a piece of paper on there, a piece of tape, put a couple marks on that paper, and then lay it on the scale. If the scale was one inch equals 10 feet, this would equal 11, say, point. 11.2 feet or 11.1 feet roughly. It's hard to tell exactly with a scale of this, but between one or two inches on a scale of one to one inch equals 10 feet is probably going to be fairly accurate on a large scale map. We could also use the same scale to say uh, one inch equals 100 feet, in which case this would be 110.1 or 111 feet, I'm sorry, 111 feet or 112 feet approximately. We look at our scales and again we're talking about ratios. Uh, this is from the AutoCAD program. We can see it has a number of built-in scales but it also has the ability to add scales and with those added scales we're putting in one paper unit equals one drawing unit. So in this case 1 16th inch equals one foot. A 16th of an inch in paper would equal one foot in actual measurements. A 2 to 1 scale would be 2 times the actual size. A 1 to 2 scale would be half the size of the actual object. So again, we can work with ratios, we can work with fractions, all of these things are available. We're also working uh, from an orthographic projection, and again I move back to the, the idea from my first initial introduction lecture of the glass box. Here we have a house, a building of sorts, and it's set up inside this imaginary glass, block, uh, glass box. And each of the panes or flaps on the glass box has uh, 
a surface that is a plane of projection. So we were to take the visual of the front elevation of this building and extract it to the front view, this is what we would see. This is what we see on the right side view, the left side, the top, the back, and the bottom. In another slide, we can look at this same orthographic projection on a simple object which is shown here in what we call an isometric view, which is at a 30 degree angle, which gives us a relatively uh, good view of a 3D object. It doesn't show us perspective or vanishing lines, but it shows us what the object looks like in three dimensions. So we have our X, Y, and Z. If we look at the top view, we can see corner two matches here, corner one is here. So we've turned this rel uh, about 90 degrees um, rotation to the right clockwise so we see this if we pull it down we want to look at this front view which is looking here here we see one and two again this is what we would see the bottom view looking up you'll notice you get a dotted line here meaning that this edge right here for number two is going to be invisible but you want to be able to show that with the bottom view we have a left side view and we have a right side view Again, you notice the differences. This one shows a solid line because we flipped it counterclockwise 90 degrees. And in this case, we flipped it clockwise 90 degrees. So we see this edge, this edge here, as a hidden line. From uh, And I don't know whether you're able to follow my mouse on this. Maybe not, but uh, hopefully... Um, you, you understand that this is basically that same glass box that's been folded out. So the important thing to recognize here is that when you draw an orthographic projection, everything needs to line up so that I can identify this edge 2 with this edge and this edge and this edge and also over here. Here's our backside view. You'll notice the backside and the front side are exactly the same. The other thing to think about now is if I wanted to describe this object in the fewest number of views, orthographic views, how many do I need? Well, I don't need the back view uh, unless there was something different there. So a top view, a front view, and either a right side view or a left side view would do. I don't need the bottom and I don't need the back because uh, I can describe this object in just these three views. Now, if I wanted to describe this object, if this from point two down to the front edge was sloped, I could show that in the front view and the top view, and I would still only need three views. So the only reason we need that front view really is to determine whether this is an angled cut or a sloped cut. If we look at this other, here we see that sloped cut here. So, <clears throat> and what they've done is identified these areas uh, with letters in the isometric view, and it's identified this is our front view looking from this direction. So if we move over to our front view here uh, on the lower left corner of the screen, you can see that item 16 here is face E in the isometric. And item 6 that the arrow is pointing to in the top view is also face E. And then item 18 in the right side view is also face E. So you can actually have three different uh, numbers that correlate to that face E. If we look at this sloped view G, in the top view, it's shown here as number 5 in the top view, number 10 in the front in the front view, I think I said top here for number 5, and it's shown as number 11 in the right side view. So we can pinpoint on each of those different views either an edge or a face that correlates to the isometric view. If I don't have that isometric view available to me and somebody just gives me the orthographic projection with a top view, a front view, and a right side, I should be able to recreate this three-dimensional model from these three views, along with some dimensions, of course, or grids. 
Now that basically goes through chapter one of the textbook and um, we're going to move on now to chapter two which starts AutoCAD. So the assumption now is that you have chapter two or you have AutoCAD uh, installed on your computer. Hopefully you're working on getting Revit installed also. And we'll start with chapter two. I want to mention that in chapter two reading assignment you only need to go as far as page 55 and you're going to stop at figure 2-41b because from there on to the end of chapter 2 it's about creating a custom uh, working environment and I really don't want to do that creating a custom working environment in AutoCAD because I'd like everybody to kind of be working off from the standard uh, if you create a custom workspace and you move your tools around, it makes it difficult for me to help you and the TA to help you um, and also to work with others as I'm demonstrating things in the lab. So we want to just kind of keep things the way they are. So let's stop on page 55 of chapter 2 and that's all I'll go through today. And uh, if you open up your textbook, if you want to kind of follow along here, uh, we'll talk about the focus of the book and this starts on page 11 of the textbook you can see the first illustration we see is the actual AutoCAD interface now yours will probably have a dark background um, and I have um, AutoCAD loaded up in the background so I can flip over to it so if we look at my AutoCAD this is the startup screen once I click my icon on my desktop this is what I'm going to see and in the textbook, it, uh, it shows us how to set up our licensing when we first install. It's going to take a little bit longer. You may have to agree to a light, uh, you know, just agree to the uh, Autodesk privacy statement. Uh, if I click through this, let's just view this as full screen. See if I can flip back and forth. So on the bottom of the screen, uh, you are going to see model layout let's see if I have this should be the second okay so anyway we are working from the model view um, I'm gonna open up I may have to flip through this I'll just leave this in this view so I can flip back and forth um, down here in the bottom anyway it shows a model now model is what we draw everything in in for our object or our objects um, and this is drawn at full scale layouts are what we export out if we're going to print this to a paper uh, mode and this is where we will scale the object into this using what we call viewports uh, over on the right side you can see some uh, uh, different elements your scaling and your um, uh, grid patterns and whatnot let's move this up until I get to that's crosshair size I don't think I really need this all right we're gonna go right to page 14 and uh, I'll back out of this and we're just going to show you in AutoCAD I want to create a new drawing so I can drop this down or I can select this for new you can see that AutoCAD has some objects here if I drop down the big A I'll call it it's my main menu and I can just say new once I click new it gives me a series of templates now auto acad.dwt is a template file that is in uh, uh, imperial measurements feet and inches uh, or decimal if we were to want to use a metric system we would use ACAD ISO so if you see ISO that generally means it's a metric system so we want to select ACAD.DWT template to start with and we'll just say open now you can see we've started with a new drawing and it's called drawing onedwg okay this is just for practice and playing around so we're not gonna we're not gonna I'm not gonna bother to save it the focus of this 
tech, this whole textbook is on two-dimensional drafting. So if we look down here, and you can see this on page 15 of the book, um, 2-3a, and we can look right here where this little toolbox is. This is our workspace. If we click on our workspace, and uh, we are going to be working in drafting and annotation. So this is our two-dimensional drawing space for our initial setup, which is fine. So that's what we're working in. We don't need to mess with Basically, when we get into three-dimensional drawing, we're going to be working in uh, Revit to do that because it's a much more um, functional uh, way to, to do our drafting in three dimensions. Now the other thing I want to talk about is our options. If you click up here uh, on the top and go down to options, it's going to bring up a menu. And one of the things I would like you to customize is your right click. We should have a three button mouse. So our three button mouse, our left mouse button is our data input button. The middle button and the middle wheel can be used to zoom in and out and to pan. And then our right mouse button has multifunctions. And if I click on this tool, and you should click on right click customization when you get your system up and running, is I want you to turn on time sensitive right click. A quick click is the same as hitting the enter key and a longer click, if I hold it down, will display a shortcut menu. And a longer click duration is anything longer than 250 milliseconds. So you're going to have to learn to do that little rhythm. So we'll say apply and close. Our default settings when units are set to unitless are in inches. So let's cancel that out. Actually, we can go up here. Just look at our display. Right now we're in a dark mode. If I wanted to change it to light mo mode and hit apply, what you'll see then is it changes to a lighter uh, menu on the top. I wanted to. I don't really need to show my scroll bars. If I hit that and hit apply, you'll notice it gives me these scroll bars. I'm going to go back to a dark menu. I think it shows up a little bit better on your screen. And we'll just say apply. Uh, let's see, anything else we want to be here? No, I think we're good. We'll just leave that the way it is. Uh, I find that drawing with a dark background in the model is easier because uh, things it's easier on your eyes, for one thing. Now, if you look on page uh, um, 17, a typical window screen, and what we're looking at first is this half of the screen. We have our display tools. We have our panel. It's the bottom here, and you'll notice when I click on the modify, it has these flyouts. These little, anytime you see a little arrow like this, it's called a flyout. So it gives you more tools that are available above and beyond your most common tools that are up here. And even those, the circle, for instance, the polyline doesn't have any. Or excuse me, the line and the polyline. Now, what's the difference between a line and a polyline? A line is a sigma line, signal single line segment. A polyline is a connected line. And uh, we'll play with that, around with those a little bit later on. We got text, dimensions. We have drawing tools. We have modification tools in these panels. So all drawing tools are listed here. All modification tools are listed here. Annotation would be dimensioning and text and notes and leaders and tables. Then we have our layers. Uh, one of the advantages of drawing on a computer as opposed to drawing and modeling on paper is that we can have elements of a drawing in different layers so that we can turn those layers on and off. We can give those layers different print qualities and different uh, uh, colors and line weights. 
Um, and then we have our current layer properties right now, or this is what we're drawing in, is by layer on everything. So right now, if we look at our layer properties in this tab, you'll see that by default, we only have one layer that we're on. And we're drawing in color white as a continuous line. Our line weight, and I can change this. Let's put it at, uh, I'm going to put mine at 0.3. And our plot style, I want it, you know, I can tell it I want you to be able to plot or I don't want you to be able to plot. We'll do something with pen tables and page setups a little later on. So for some of you that have had some AutoCAD in the past, this is going to be a repeat of those things. For this exercise, we'll just play around in one drawing level. We can override that here if I want to draw in a different color like yellow and maybe a different line weight. I can override by layer and uh, and change that. And you'll see right now I only have three line styles in here. Um, and we'll look at creating other line styles or pulling those other line styles up later on. Grouping is being able to group things together and then ungroup them if I want to move or manipulate things around. Our uh, measurement tool, if we want to measure things like distance, radius, angle, area, and volume. We have copy and paste tools, and we have our, uh, our view tools here, and everything is in Imperial. So let's, uh, and we've looked at both uh, um, the left side or across the top. Now if we look on the bottom, and you can find this on page 2-6, um, we have the ability to display the grid. You'll see if it's blue, it's on. If it's gray, it's off. So if I left click on this, you'll see my grid turns off on the screen. Hopefully you can see that. We can have snap modes. And if we want to, uh, right now it's set to uh, grid snap. Let's look at our snap settings. And we can see that snap is off. Our grid is off. If I turn it on, I can just do it with F7 or I can turn the snap on with F9. F9 is a toggle key so your function F9 will toggle this on. If I do a function F9 you can see that snaps on and off. I'm just holding down my shift and function 9 on my laptop. Same with grid. So F9 is snap on and F7 is snap off. So we can put our grid spacing on. Let's say I want to make my grid spacing 1 and 1 so that would equal one inch and um, that's my snap spacing I want my grid spacing to be one and one and I'll put um, oh, let's put uh, 10 actually every a major line every one keep it simple 2d model space everything's good and we'll just say okay now if I hit Shift F7, or Function F7, there's my grid. Shows up a little lighter. I zoom in, you'll see that that grid zooms with it. So those functions are set to be there. And if I hit Function F9, and I just try to draw a line, you'll notice it will only let me put a point, how it jumps from point to point on those intersections. It'll only let me put a point on those intersections if I hit function F9 again now I can put a point anywhere I want so let's talk about a little tool that we just turned on or hopefully you've turned it on and um, I'll leave the the grid snap off for now but if we just start with our line tool up here And I'll go down, and I'm just going to left click with my mouse. That starts my point. And I'm going to draw a line segment. Oh, out here ways. And I'll just let's just key in 10 and hit enter. And now I'm going to right mouse button, which is also the enter key. Just right mouse button. Now I could go up and click the line tool again, 
or I could just hit the enter key or I could hit my right mouse button. When I hit my right mouse button, it remembers my last command. Right mouse button starts the line again. Right mouse button. I'm going to right mouse button again. Now it remembers that line. I'm just going to start a line over here with the left mouse button. I'm going to move it up here. Left mouse button. And then to stop, I'm just going to hit my right mouse button. Right mouse button again. And it wants me to start a new line. Right mouse button, right mouse button. So I can actually, I'm actually, as long as I'm drawing lines, I can use just my mouse. Let's say I want to draw a line starting from this endpoint. You'll notice it gives me a, a little green box. And that's called a snap point. And if I look down here, you can see that my snap is turned on. If I hit this little flyout down here, you'll notice it comes up. And I can tell that I'm set right now to snap to endpoints, to center points, to intersections, to extensions. And I want to add perpendicular and midpoints. Um, and it will also turn on tangents. Okay? So now. I'll just turn that off. Actually, it brings it up and I can select them all. But here's my endpoint, midpoint. You'll notice each one has a different graphic symbol. Endpoints are, are uh, boxes. Midpoints are triangles. Center points are circles. Intersections are crosses. Perpendicular is this little perpendicular symbol. And a tangent is a circle with a bar across the top. We'll just say OK. checking these other things out. My polar tracking is set to 90 degrees. Good. Hit OK. Now if I want to hit a line, or I'll just right mouse button to get my last command. You'll notice it gives me that point. So if I want to put a line and let it connect to each endpoint, I don't have to guess at when I'm near that. You'll notice it'll kind of just lock it on. I can zoom in with my wheel and out. So I'm going to find that point. I'm going to drop this down. And you'll notice it's uh, 1.9993 inches long at 93 degrees. Right click to reset. Hit enter again. Now I want to start another point. This time I want to go from the midpoint. So there's my midpoint. You'll notice it shows me that triangle. I want to find the midpoint here. I don't have to measure anything. I'm going to let the computer find that information for me. There's a midpoint. And I want to go to this midpoint right here. Left click and then right click. If I right click again, it's going to ask for that line symbol. Now, let's uh, let's do a circle. And let's do a normally a circle. You can do it by uh, two points or tan tan radius. Let's just do a center point circle and I'll just place that out here. Just just eyeballing it. Now if I want to draw a line you'll notice that I can start here and it's going to automatically show me where the tangent point is for this line to touch the circle. If I go beyond it it's going to force me to find that tangent point. Or I could go to the center point. If I want to go to the tangent point down here, you'll notice it will automatically find that tangent point. So from the end of that first line to the tangent point is going to be 3.8757. Left click and then right click to stop it. If I want to do another line to the upper portion, I'll just start here and there's my tangent point there. Using these snap mode modes makes things very easy to draw in two dimensions. Uh, we're going to talk in chapter three about using absolute and uh, relative uh, placement uh, because if you notice down here on the left side it gives me a, an, a, uh, uh, an XY and just to give you a little upstart on that if I want to start a line I'll do it just using the command line L You'll notice when I hit L, it automatically drops down and gives me all of the commands that start with L. 
rather than going up to the top I'll just start and hit enter and say yeah I want to know I want to be in the line mode so it says specify your first point I know that that XY down there in the lower left corner is my zero zero so if I just type in zero tab zero and hit enter whoops it automatically finds that zero zero point and I just pull it up so if we're drawing something in um, absolute method everything goes from zero zero and if we're drawing it in relative it's from whatever point you are at right at that at that moment um, the relative is relative to the current point and the absolute is always from zero zero I always get those mixed up so I want to be sure absolute is always from zero zero relative is always from whatever your current point is right now um, and again we'll get into a little exercise in chapter three um, to talk about that let's uh, let's look at our uh, drawing settings again and I'm going to come over here to this little display under my drafting and annotation oops sorry I want to be up here under drawing utilities and let's look at um, and I just dropped this down from the big red A the main menu I'm going to drawing utilities and we're going to look at units I can set my units right now I'm working in inches or my scale uh, which we should always keep that way but if I wanted to work in um, architectural and it's so this is going to be in feet and inches the degrees are going to be in decimal we have degrees minutes and seconds grads radians and surveyor units we'll start with just degrees and decimals we'll be working with some uh, um, surveyor units uh, later on in the semester but for now we'll just work in degrees um, lighting we don't need to work uh, worry too much about right now but let's say for instance I wanted to draw a line one foot nine and nine sixteenths at zero degrees I'm gonna just hit my L key for line enter left click and I'm just gonna key in two foot nine hyphen nine slash sixteen inches I'm gonna hit my uh, my tab key and I want it at zero degrees there it is hit escape or right click now if I want to measure that line for distance I'm going to say what's the distance from here to here is and you'll see on my little ghost dimension it shows two foot nine and nine sixteenths if I didn't know what the fraction was you can also use decimals you could say nine point whatever nine divided by sixteen is so it will interpolate between both uh, decimal and fractions what by whatever you key in but if you're going inches and fractions always use that hyphen afterwards so otherwise it won't uh, it won't input the information if we move up to page 21 uh, in the textbook we're going to talk about see if I can get up there this one's all in here if I do a double click on it you can see that in paper mode I can move the paper around zoom in and out uh, but now I want to go click on where it says paper I'm going into the model side and I want to turn off the grid and I know this doesn't show up very well but you can see now I can zoom in and out so if I want to put this in at a scale I can say one to one so this is full scale if I hold down my middle wheel I can pan up so I can print this portion of the model out at full scale I want to see maybe what it is at one to two and let's look at one to four now one to four ratio would be one quarter scale so at one quarter scale I can at least fit most of this information 
into the drawing file. So the other thing we want to look at, if I hold down my right mouse button while it's on this tab down here, it gives me Page Setup Manager. Click on that, and I want to just modify what this layout is. For instance, I want to send it to a Adobe PDF. And I think in your case, you may only see on yours Adobe PDF.pc3, uh, but you should have maybe a PDF report writer or some type of a PDF um, information to be able to plot to a PDF. Uh, we have a plot style. We'll work on this when we get into some of the other things. You don't have as many as I do because these are customizable plot tables that tell it how to print out certain line weights and styles. Uh, and we'll leave that the way it is. Scale is one to one. It prints out at landscape. And we'll just say OK. And close. If I want to see what this is going to look like to print out, I'll just right click here and say plot. Yeah, I just want to print a single sheet. And I just want to preview this. So this is what this would look like if it printed out on a printer. Because it's yellow. I can just hit this little button up here. And let's go to our... Um, cancel that now. Let's go to our page setup manager. Just to show you something really quickly, we'll go to create a new pen table using I think this CFG. Actually, let's do it from scratch and see what happens. We'll call it CIE 101.16 Finish. Now, you'll see that if I've selected color yellow, which I think is what I'm working in, I can say my properties are I want you to print out in black and I want to print that line weight out as a 0.35 line weight and just say save and close. Now when I hit preview what you'll notice is it's printing that at a fairly heavy line weight darkly even though it's yellow on the screen so this is a way for us to use colors and interpolate those back into printed line weights when we're ready to print out on paper and it's something we have to kind of work on in our head but uh, this is what the printing would look like so I'll just cancel that and close it. It's going to save it anyway. Um, if I were to go back to my model now, and let's just put change my color to say red, and I want to draw another circle out here, and maybe another circle. This time let's do it by two points. Actually, let's say tan tan radius. So I want it from the tangent here and the tangent there and this radius oops didn't work try it again circle specify a point on an object for first tangent and second tangent it will be right here specify the radius of the circle There it is. Forgot to put the second one in. So now I drew those in red. So if we go back to our layout two, there's our lines. You can see it's still at full scale. And if I right click and say plot, continue with just a single sheet and preview this, what we'll see now is it's still picking up my pen table, but I haven't assigned a color or a line weight to red. So it's showing that it just as the red color. Everything else is picked up. Uh, and we'll We'll do some more of that. We're actually going to set up a standard pen table as we do some more efficient drawings later on. We'll cancel that out. Um, 
as you read through, you'll find some other things. So read through that chapter again. We're just going up to page um, 55 on some of these settings. So you can go in and play around with some of these areas. Um, and when we have our first lab, we'll start doing some actual drawings, maybe creating a title block uh, and showing you how to do these things. And one of the things, again, you're only going to go up to uh, page 55 on the, um, um, on the drawing. One of the other things that you're going to learn, uh, we talked about inputting using just our commands. I just hit my line tool again, and um, I want to specify my first point, which would be oh, right here. I'm still drawing in red. You'll see how it's giving me distance and angle. Um, if I hit, I can also do uh, not only distance and angle, but I can do distance and um, in XY coordinates by using the absolute or relative command. And, and again, I'll mess with that later. If we set our angles up, it's object tracking. I have snap mode off. We can change this from 90 degree increments to 45 degree increments. So it kind of locks on us. You'll see it locks at zero. It's going to lock at 45, actually 24, and 60. That was different. What did I do? be at 45s. So maybe it's because I already started the line. Zero. There's 45. You see how it gives me a little bit of a lock. As you're moving your mouse, you'll kind of feel it. Kind of lock in at 45. And then at 90. 135. You see that green line show up? And then 180. So you can set your locking increments at specific angles if you like to work in that in that manner. Now, if I wanted to draw a line, and I wanted to start from this endpoint, but I didn't want to start the line until I got over here, say, 10 inches. If I just hold my mouse here and let it set for a second and start moving it across, you'll see nothing happens. Just let it set. Oops, i got to hit line again. Let it set there. Just let your mouse set and just move it. Start moving it. You'll see how that comes across? Now, if I just key in 10 and the inch mark, it actually will start that line. 10 inches over. So I don't have to draw a temporary line. I can just let it set. I'm going to left click here and then right click. Again, right click one more time to start a new line. Now just let it set there for a second. End point. Start pulling it across. And maybe I can just move my mouse 6 inches. Left click. So it allows me to set that offset wherever I need to be. Okay? And we can do multiple offsets as we get out through this. I think I can try it. Here we can go over. Say six inches. And move it down. And it'll lock at that 45 degree and then I can pull it back up. Say six inches at 45 degrees or 225 degrees I should say. There's six inches at 225 degrees. Just left click, and then I can start moving. And again, it'll lock at 45 degree increments all the way around. You can also turn that off. Um, my object tracking. You'll see that that stays on. This is. That's, that's snap tracking. I can turn it off using the F10 key. That's my polar tracking. And you see now I don't have any lines. And now F10. So there it locks in 45 degrees. I hit function F10 key. Turns it off. 
function F10 turns it back on. So just some interesting tools and these are some basic tools that we're going to use to kind of drive our, our AutoCAD program. A couple things in finishing off the first chapter and a half uh, is think of I like to think of working with the computer-aided design software um, as similar to playing a musical instrument. Um, use two hands. Think of it as like playing a piano or playing a guitar. You're going to use your mouse hand as your chords and your um, left hand normally would be your input device for specific data and commands on your keyboard. Um, so try to learn to use two hands when you're working with the CAD software. Your right hand on the mouse to start the commands. Your left hand would actually identify which commands or um, areas that you want to work in. You can dr draw in with one hand, but uh, you're going to be slower. And I'm going to encourage you to use both hands and learn to work with both hands um, and keep your cell phone away from them so <laughs> just to make it easier so if I want to get rid of stuff now here's another little tool before I end up left to right and right to left if I want to eliminate all this stuff I can just go left click drag through everything you'll see how it highlights and hit my delete key okay control Z undo now let me do it again. This time I'm only going to go through this much material. You see it only selected the items that were completely encapsulated in that rubber band box. So left click, left click, it's only going to select those items. On the other hand, that's left to right. Hit escape, that selected everything. Now if I go right to left, you'll notice that selects things that I just get partially in. So I can select everything. Say I just want to select these items and I want to leave that yellow line and the red line out. I can drag it right to left and it's going to pick up everything that I touch. Not necessarily everything that's encapsulated. So again, coming this way, it's only going to select the things that are completely within that rubber band box. But if I go right to left, it selects everything that I touch. I want these items. Say I just want these three items. I can do that. Another method is just left click and just keep left clicking on items that you want. So if I just wanted to delete these items, I can just hit my delete key. They're gone. I want to just take out these lines. Maybe these were construction lines that I don't need anymore. I can just take out individual pieces by just continuing to left click. So deleting and creating items I'm using my mouse. It depends on which direction, left to right, right to left, as to what you're encapsulating. Um, but uh, a little practice with that, and you will become proficient at it. So, again, you're going to read those first chapter and part of the second chapter up to page 55. And when we meet for um, our first lab, I'm hoping people will have their... Um, software installed, a little incentive. If you have it installed, you may get out a little early. Uh, if you don't have it installed, we're going to work with you to try to make sure that we do get it installed. Um, so with that, I'll, I'll sign off and, uh, and we'll, we'll get our next video started for Chapter 3 um, for the lab work, starting with Absolute and Relative. So that's it. Thank you.